Hey guys, welcome to The Collective. Uh, we're gonna be hearing the third part of Satsi's message, but before we do, I wanna share a verse out of 1 Timothy. It's uh, chapter one, verse five. It says, the aim of our charge is a love that issues from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. So as we go into worship here, I wanna pray this over all of us. Father, Lord, I just ask, we ask for, for these three things, Lord. I thank you so much, Lord. We want um, sincere faith, Lord. We want pure hearts, Lord. We want to have clear conscience, Lord. So Lord, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just search us right now, that you would uh, just shine your light on our hearts, Lord. And, and God, I just, I just thank you. We don't have to be afraid of you. We don't have to be afraid of coming into your light. And Lord, I just pray for courage in, in each person who is a part of the house church, each person watching those videos too, to just boldly come into your throne of grace and to uh, just allow you to search us and to know us and have your way in us, Lord. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus, we pour our praise before your feet right now, Lord God. You are so worthy, Jesus. You are the most worthy, Lord Jesus. God, you're the most worthy, Lord Jesus. of honor. God, you're worthy of our time. Jesus, we pour this out to you. Anyone who escapes from Hazael will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. And yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. Because at this point he was asking him to go back through the wilderness of Damascus, and when he arrived there to anoint Hazel to be king, and also to anoint Jehu, the grandson of uh, Nimshi, to be the king of Israel, and then uh, anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, from the town of Abel, uh, Meholah, to replace him as a prophet. So there was a lot of anointing that had to happen, which shows me that even in his weakness, Elijah never lost his anointing. Don't let Satan try to destroy you by lying to you that God no longer remembers his promises to you or that his calling on your life has changed just because you're experiencing fear in your life. He says, Jehu is the one that ended up killing Jezebel. So that means that you and I are responsible to train the next generation to be the one that slay the spirit of Jezebel. That while we fight in this generation, that same spirit that destroys life, destroys humanity, tries to take freedom away from us as human beings, tries to tell you that you have no other choice but the choice that they give you, that is the spirit of Jezebel. And when we start raising up young men and young women to be kings, to be prophetess, to be people who walk in the anointing of God, that is when we see the spirit of Jezebel completely defeated. Because I will tell you right now, it may not get defeated with this generation. But what if it gets defeated with the next generation? What if we have enough young people rising up and saying, I will carry the torch I will be like Elisha that comes alongside of Elijah and says, I will learn from you right now so that I can continue the mission. Elisha was a greater prophet than Elijah. He did even more miracles than Elijah did because he was willing to get away from the field that he was in and follow the prophet. And here is the next thing that happened. When Elijah went and found him, Elisha was already in the field working. And he was saying, okay, I'm leaving everything behind. I will come and learn from you. In uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 11, it says, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. There was a reason that Jesus mentioned that in the New Testament. Because John the Baptist was having the same exact mantle, just like uh, Elijah did. He was preparing the way for the Lord to come. And now that... John the Baptist had already been killed. Jesus was speaking to this generation and he was saying, the Elijah anointing is coming and is going to be upon you to bring me back as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I am coming back on this earth and my anointing now rests upon you. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. What does that mean? The day of the Lord is coming. The rapture is coming. The day when Christ will take his bride home is coming. But who are we and what are we doing? 
Are we preparing the way of the Lord? Are we really speaking just like John the Baptist without fear, with boldness, and going out there to the kings, to the principalities, to the powers, to the authorities in current places, and saying, I am here. I have a word. I'm going to speak that word even if you don't like it. <laughs> Remember what Elijah said to King Ahab. I'm not the troublemaker. You are for worshiping all of your idols. There is a lot of idolatry happening right now in our nation and in the nations of the world. It seems like humanism is becoming God. And that is exactly what is coming out of Europe. Europe at the moment is the most least evangelized continent in the world. And uh, it is the most anti-God continent. To the point that in December they tried to remove God out of uh, everything. To, uh, they said there is no more uh, Christianity, there is no more celebration of Christmas because Christ is dead. And uh, I may not always agree with the Pope, but for this time, he was actually right. He stood up to the European Union and he said, wait a minute, you can't take Christ out of Christmas. You need to keep him back in. And so they kept Christ for another year. But I don't know what's going to happen this year because uh, under communism, we didn't have Christmas. And see, you couldn't celebrate Christmas and, and you never even heard the name of Jesus under communism. It's, it, when I say darkness, you couldn't even see your hand. It was that dark. So that is the exact same spirit that is trying to come back and to say there is no Christ. There is no validity of the Bible. There is no such spirit of freedom that can reign through the Word of God. Yes, there is, and we know it, but they want to kill all of the prophets in the land so that nobody is there to tell the truth to the next generation. Do you know how people disappeared during communism? They would be walking home and they would not go home. All of a sudden, they disappeared because their neighbor betrayed them, because their relative betrayed them. Somebody in the family who loved the darkness so much gave them up to KGB, and they came and arrested them and killed them, to the point that even within churches, pastors betrayed their own congregations just so that they can get a little bit of money from the government so that they can see somebody else go to a concentration camp and lose their life. When I started seeing what is happening here during COVID, I couldn't think of more of a worse time possible, possible when people would begin to betray one another for the fact that they went to church or for the fact that they didn't do something that the government said that they were supposed to do. And when the government becomes God in our life, we become worshipers of Baal. And when we become worshipers of Baal, Jezebel begins to reign and begins to take out the prophets one by one. But I'm here today to remind you that Jezebel's spirit is being broken down because the Elijahs is arising today as men and women. And we're saying, I am not hiding. I am going out. I am going back in remembrance of where I came from. And I am coming back and I am taking the authority that God has given me in my hands and I am marching right into that land and speaking life to what has already been stolen. I am bringing it back into the freedom, into the authority of God is going to produce life and not death. That is who God has called us to be right now. So um, you may look up 2 Kings chapter 9 verse 21 through 25. Uh, where Jehu killed Jezebel and how he killed her. He trampled once they threw her out the window. He trampled upon her with, her with his own feet. Do you know that we cannot play with Satan? We cannot play with demons and say, I'm just going to, you know, step a little bit on you. No, you either kill that demonic power in your life or you're going to become friends with it and you're going to be in bondage of it. So once and forever, we cannot be holding hands with the world and saying, oh, yeah, we're just buddies with the darkness. Oh, no, the darkness will overtake the light very slowly because it will dry out your battery that was connected once to Jesus. And now your little lamp that was connected to that battery is coming dead. 
It's not coming and producing light anymore because the light in that lamp has to be refreshed every day with the oil of the Holy Spirit. You don't just have a lamp just to keep it pretty collecting dust. You have a lamp so that you can fill it with the oil of the Holy Spirit every single day, afresh in worship, in relationship, so that you don't hide in the cave of your life. Revelation chapter 12 is my last scripture, verse 11. And they defeated him, or they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony, not loving even their lives so much unto death. And uh, in the Message Bible, it says that they triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death. How do we overcome by the blood of the Lamb? which is the sacrifice that Jesus did for us, the word of our testimony. Don't forget your testimony. Who are you and what has Christ done for you? Because the moment we forget what Christ has done for us, we have forgotten our testimony. And we're no no different than a religious person that says, oh yeah, well, I know there is no God. I'm just lighting up a candle. I was, we were also in Greece on this trip. And on every single corner of the street, there were these little posts that I was wondering, what are they about? And Mark thought they were mailboxes. Come to find out, they were repentance stations. You go in, you pray to the icon that they have put there, you light a candle, you ask for forgiveness of your sins from that candle or from uh, that icon, and then you move on onto drinking, partying, trafficking, mafia, whatever you want to do, you're forgiven because of that candle. It was such a horrible religious system that they have the pretense of knowing or understanding Christ to the point that I decided I'm going to go to the Orthodox Church because it was Easter morning just to check things out. I've been to Orthodox churches before, but never to uh, an actual one in Greece. And the lady looks at me and she says, are you Greek Orthodox? And I said, no, I'm a believer in Jesus. Oh, you can't walk in here. And I said, really? How come? And uh, she was a nun. She spoke English. She said, well, first of all, you need to put this dress on. So she gives me this uh, thing to put on. And then she said, if you don't believe in uh, kissing the icon and praying to the Pope, then you need to leave. And I said, oh, well, not to worry then. I'm going to leave because I believe in Jesus. And I'm like, and I think you should too, since it is Easter. I'm like, we are celebrating the risen Christ, right? And she just kind of looked at me like, okay, here is the door. And so I left. I mean, what am I going to do? But this is what we're talking about. That spirit of religion has nothing to do with Christianity. Because this is a powerless church. It's not bringing life or nothing to anybody. It's just bringing condemnation. Mark said he got a headache from all the wailing that was going on, so he left also. He, he stayed a little bit longer because he's an American. He's never seen anything like it, so he was fascinated. And they let him in because he had pants on. And I couldn't get in because I also had pants on, and uh, so I had to leave. But what am I saying? That we overcome him by the revelation of the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and what is the third part? Not loving our lives even unto death. Do you know how much freedom there is when you realize that it's okay for you to die for Christ if you know that it's gain on the other side? That it's okay to lose your life if it matters for the gospel. Not to just randomly die, but to die because you've been persecuted for the gospel. I'm not willing to die in an airplane crash unless I'm saving the entire plane and they're trying to kill me. That's a different story. But to just randomly die in that, no. I am speaking life over me, just like you should speak life over you. But to die for Christ should be an exciting thing to say, God, here we are. We're ready for persecution. We're ready to withstand. We're not ready to hide. We're ready to go out and be the Elijahs of our hour so that the next generation can learn from us, so that we can pray over them and release them into their power, into their anointing, into their giftings. Amen?
So this is what I want to do. Um, I want all of us to stand up and um, I feel like, first of all, I want to pray over us a commissioned prayer of going into all the world, having that spirit of Elijah. The second thing that I want to pray over is for the spirit of fear to be broken off of you. Yeah. Um, the spirit of fear to be broken off of you. And spirit of intimidation. You may feel like you've been battling Jezebel day in and day out. And that is not the will of God. You need to stand together with one another. So that's the second thing that we want to pray. And then I want to pray over all of the young people. Anybody who is under 25 or under 30, I guess you guys are still super young. Now that we're in our late 40s, uh, everything else seems uh, young to me. So uh, I want to pray over those of you who are young because we want to release you and commission you to go and to not be afraid. So let's start with the first thing is, um, is we're going to stand together. Just raise your hands to the Lord. I just want you to receive from him right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we are brought together today to hear your word, to hear your message, and we're not afraid. We're not afraid of what's to come. We're not afraid of the future because you hold the future. We're here to say that we remember who you are, that we remember your sacrifice on the cross, and we speak today that our testimony in our mouth is more powerful to defeat the lies of the enemy that try to come and lie to us. We're more powerful than any spirit of Jezebel that is trying to come and destroy the calling and the purposes of each one of us. We're standing today and declaring that your mantle that you have released upon each of us, men and women, to go and to be commissioned to go into all the world and preach the gospel, that we're receivers of that anointing, that we receive that mantle once again. And we say, God, here we are, missionaries in our own land, prophets in our own land. We receive right now the prophetic mantle of Elijah to go and to pierce the darkness. We receive right now the anointing of Elisha to be able to go and to raise the dead, to be able to go and to heal, to be able to go and to bring uh, food to those who don't have anything out of nothing, all of a sudden that you're able to do the supernatural miracles in our life. We receive right now that mantle that you gave to us the kingdom of uh, heaven uh, that you have pla placed inside of our hearts through your Holy Spirit, that you are saying you can do all things through me because I strengthen you, because you have given us the keys to the kingdom and we don't have to be afraid. Father, we thank you right now that the spirit of fear is broken off of your people. We pray and believe right now that as we have raised our hands, that every person who has come here tonight, and he, has, he and she, they have battling that spirit of Jezebel, trying to escape, feeling like they can't breathe, that they can't think, that they're just intimidated, that they're just the ones battling this whole thing on their own. We pray right now against that spirit of intimidation and deceit and lie to be broken off of every person in the name of Jesus. We declare freedom over their mind, freedom over their heart, freedom over their bodies, freedom over their soul, freedom over their spirit. Father, we declare today that they are delivered from the past and from the things of the past that have been done in the darkness, and now they have become righteous, that now they are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and that they overcome by the word of the testimony. Father, we thank you that today we say, God, we lay down our life. We're not afraid of persecution. We're not afraid of the darkness. We have lit up our candles inside of us with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And we're saying, God, today we are not afraid of any darkness. We are raising our voices and we're speaking loud, and we declare that darkness in Washington State has to surrender to the name and the light of Christ. 
We declare that every ungodly law and policy against your church, against the believers, against humanity has to bow and surrender before Jesus. We speak confusion in the enemy's camp, even in the plans and the lawlessness of people that are trying to bring this darkness to us. We speak right now that their minds are going to be so confused, that their souls are going to be so tied up, that their tongues are going to be tied up, that out of their lips they will not be able to speak another lie, but that they will fall prey to their own lies and their own deceit, and their eyes would be open to the salvation of Jesus. Father, we declare right now that there is no demon in hell that can withstand a church that knows you, that can withstand this church that follows you and knows you by name, knows you by the Spirit, knows you because of the love that you have poured into their hearts. Father, we thank you today that we are once again arising out of the ashes of life, uh, new, that we are once again arising, arising. There is a rising that God is stirring up right now, a rising of your dreams, a rising of new vision, a rising of a new life, of a new future. You may be feeling like, oh my goodness, there is nothing for me to look forward to. God is speaking, there is future. There is future. There is future that I have for you. My plans for your future are for good and not for evil. To bring you hope. To bring you that future that I designed you to have. And none of this is going to uh, be taken aside because of what the enemy has thought he is going to drag you through. None of it. Father, we speak right now that word. Let it be sealed. Let it be sealed in the souls of your people so that they are not wavering back and forth like a wave, but that they are standing firm on your promises, on your goodness, on your truth. Father, we thank you today, right now, that there is unity in this place. We bring and pray for the spirit of unity to reign in this church, to reign in this valley, to reign in this state, to reign in our nation. That spirit of disunity that is trying to come against families, we break it right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God, that it will not withstand. It will come down in the name of Jesus. That spirit of rebellion, it is broken. That spirit of witchcraft, it is broken. That spirit of deceit, it is broken. That spirit of murder, it is broken. Father, we thank you right now that none of those principalities and powers of battle are going to withstand your power that we're speaking forth and proclaiming the goodness of God to reign. The goodness of God to reign in the name of Jesus over this entire planet. Satan, we have bound you by the power and authority of Christ. You will not unleash all of this death upon the people of this world. We speak life right now. This is not the time for Satan to reign. This is the time for the church to reign. And you have to remember that. You have to remember that as long as you stand here, we withhold the gates of hell to prevail against the plans of humanity. Nothing will prevail against humanity as long you and I as a church understand our authority. Today we're standing and we're saying, God, just like with the revelation of Elijah that he finally had, that is not about the miracle that he performed, it's about the miracle maker that we hold on to. We hold on to you, Jesus, our author and finisher of our faith, our miracle worker, the one that defeated death, that defeated sin, and that you rose again so that we can rise again anew. Father, we thank you that death is defeated, that we are connected with you once and forever, that our sin is wiped out, and we declare forth that people in our life that don't know you yet are coming to the salvation knowledge of Jesus. We call them into the kingdom of God, east, west, North and south, we speak to their soul to be awakened out of that darkness. We speak to their eyes to be open out of that deceit. We speak to that heart that has been asleep for so long in religion to be awakened to the relationship of Jesus Christ. 
Father, we thank you. Today we're not praying some powerless prayers. Today we're praying anointing prayers. Today we're praying because we are connected with the throne room of heaven and we bring forth your will as it is done in heaven. It is going to be done here on earth in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Take that breakthrough in your life for your family. Take that freedom back to your family. You are carrying the spirit of Elijah upon you. Say with me right now, I am a carrier of the spirit of Elijah in my life. I am a carrier of the spirit of God in my life. I have been raised up as a prophet to the nations. I bring good news everywhere I go. And everywhere I stand, death stops and life begins. Do you believe it? Awesome. I believe it too. So I believe that none of us are going home hiding from here on out. We're not going to be hiding. Amen. When somebody asks us what we think about abortion, we're going to tell them. When somebody asks us what we think about globalism, we're going to tell them. When somebody asks us what we think about the end of the world, we're going to tell them it's not the end. It's just the beginning of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You know, the spirit of globalism that tries to take over through the spirit of humanism, it is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Satan always tries to overplay his card right before the consumption of the sacrifice. And I'm here today to remind you once again, guys, this is not a time to hide. This is not a time to be afraid of the naysayers. This is not a time to be afraid of the spirit of Jezebel. You have been anointed to stand for such a time as this. You have been anointed for such a time as this. I am commissioning you today through the power of the name of Jesus. Go out and bring the good news to everyone that you know. Be a carrier of the good news. Amen.